Hey, Ellen, are you really not coming to the hospital again? You haven't come to the hospital even once since our father felt ill. Yeah, not sure I can make it today. Sorry. I have plans and won't be back until evening. When are you going to have time for God's sake? You married Dad and he soon became ill. You're his wife. Don't you even care? His other kids are there, right? What's the problem? I really don't see a problem here. <laughs> He's way happier having his kids than little old me. But that doesn't mean you can just ignore this and stay away. At least visit once. Seems the respectful thing to do. My younger brother are saying the same things. Have a little sympathy for Pete's sake. Yeah. Well, I may not have time, but let me think about it. I'll pop in if I can spare the time. Until then, take care of things over there, would you? I'd appreciate it. Are you kidding me? Spare time? All you're doing is going out drinking with your friends. You have all the time in the world, in my opinion. Huh? Why do you know that? Oh, I get it. You saw me somewhere, right? I saw you on social media. Looks like you're having one hell of a good time. Just the other night, you went to some expensive club downtown with those male hookers. You spent thousands of dollars. You even held an extravagant party at your place. Oh, please, stop it. Are you checking on me because you suddenly fell in love with me? How embarrassing. Actually, it's kind of creepy to tell you the truth. <laughs> I wasn't checking. It just happened to be in my usual feed. After all, you married my dad. Forget about that. That's nothing. I want you to stop using all of my father's money for your own enjoyment. Can you understand the dire situation that my father is in? If my father hears what you've been doing, it'll break his heart. What is to you, anyways? He's my husband, not yours. I'll do as I like. What's so wrong about a wife using her husband's money? All I'm saying is for you to think of the circumstances. Your husband is in the hospital. That alone should alarm you. What's more, my father didn't give you permission to use his money. Even if you're married, you spend way over what's normal. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Don't you even know what your father's total assets are? A few thousand bucks is just a drop in the bucket. At any rate, there is a limit to how much you can spend. Money doesn't grow on trees. You do know that my father's money isn't yours. You didn't earn it. I think if we're legally married, the money belongs to us both. So I really don't see a problem here. As a matter of fact, Irene, who gives you the right to act as your father's a variator anyways? What are you trying to say? That it doesn't concern me? Yeah, I guess. You're a grown woman. You have your own family, to me, you just come off as a busybody, always nosing around where you have no business nosing around. He's my father. I have the right to be a little inquisitive of my father's well-being. Yeah, well, whatever. Sorry to hurt your feelings. So that's settled. Can I go now? I got a friend waiting on me. Who's more important to you, this so-called friend or my father? You're starting to sound like some character in a daytime soap opera. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm not joking around. Yeah, yeah, but you do make me laugh sometimes. I gotta go. Look after my hubby for me, would ya? Please, Irene, would you stop calling me? The buzzing is driving me nuts. What is it? Is there something you want? What do you think I want, Ellen? I wish you would just answer your phone. We need to talk. I said I'm busy. I don't have time to answer the phone. You're always pestering me. What's with the non-stop phone calls? Want to hear my sweet and soothing voice? So, what is it? What do you want? My father's condition has suddenly worsened. You have to get to the hospital right this moment before it's too late. His condition has gotten worse? Seriously? 
Does that mean he doesn't have long? You think maybe he'll never wake up? You make it sound like he's already passed away. His condition has worsened, but he's alive. Sorry about that. It's just that you phoned me, so I imagine the worst. Just a natural reaction, that's all. Don't get all high strung. I don't care if it's not just a natural reaction. How could you say something like that for crying out loud? All right already. I'm sorry. So what? He's gonna be okay. Is that what you're saying? I just talked to the doctor and he said some grime diagnosis, but if he can just get through this right now and his fever goes down, then maybe just maybe. Oh, right. I figured as much. Finally, huh? It was way longer than I expected. Longer than? What are you talking about? Your dad was already physically pretty weak when we married, right? So, I figured I would get his inheritance right away without having it all dragged out. But he seems to be hanging on even now. But maybe the long wait is over, huh? I was getting worried that his word would go on for months or maybe years. That would have been hell. Hang on a second, Ellen. Are you seriously saying that? Although you haven't been married for long, the fact does not change that he's your husband. Right back at you, Irene. Do you really believe what you just said? Do you realize how old your father is, for goodness sake? He's like the same age as my folks. Did you really think I loved him? You're way dumber than I thought if you believed that. Now you're the one making jokes, Irene. <laughs> Are you telling me that you married my father just for his money? You really think I would marry an old sick cheeser like your father? Out of love? For the love of God, you're delusional! But I did fulfill my spouse obligations. You have no right to accuse me of anything, my dear. What spousal obligation? All you did was use my father's money to enjoy yourself. Not once did you visit my father in the hospital. How could you even say that? After his previous wife passed away, I was the one who cheered him up. He was crying out of companionship. He said he was lonely, and I satisfied his needs. That's all he wanted. I paid my dues to him. No one can fault me for that, much less you. Your attitude is despicable. Don't you have a modicum of sympathy for my father? Please, don't start with the melodrama again. I'm really not in the mood. Just text me when he's gone, okay? I'll make sure I attend his funeral. I can do that much. But all the preparations are too much for me, so you guys handle that part, okay? I can't believe the lack of respect you have towards my father. I can never forgive you for this. Just remember that. Do you really think everybody who attend the funeral will even talk to you? The only people who will be coming to the funeral will be relatives and from the people of work. Mm-hmm, right. After the funeral, they'll just end up as total strangers to me. I don't really give a damn what they think of me, to be honest. Okay, so don't forget to call me. Mm, see ya. Hey, Irene. Must have been pretty hectic with the funeral and all. You're the eldest, so it must have been hard on you. My brothers were here with me. They helped me out, so it's fine. Unlike someone I know. You sound kind of upset. You are, aren't you? You're mad at me. I can't understand why you would think otherwise. Actually, I'm furious. You didn't even show up after my father died. You really had the nerve show up at the funeral? If you weren't my father's wife, I would have taken that broom and kicked you out of there. Goodness me. No need to get so angry, Irene. You continue to be angry like that, you'll never know happiness. Light up. Sorry, but I really can't stoop to your level. And why the hell are you texting me? I have nothing more to do with you. I'm pretty busy right now, so I wish you would just make it quick. You don't have to be so rude. Oh well, whatever. I just wanted to verify something with you. That family meeting to discuss what's going to happen going forward, that's tomorrow, right? Yeah, that's right. Tomorrow at noon. What do you care? 
care? Of course I care. What are you, nuts? The most important issue has to be discussed. I also want to convey something to you to make sure there is no misunderstanding. Please stop eating around the bush, would you? Just give it to me straight. Like I said, I'm busy. Yeah, right. Then I better get on with it, huh? About that inheritance, it all belongs to me. Just so you guys are aware of that. All you kids must nullify all rights to my inheritance. You get that? Boy, you don't give up, do you? I was wondering what you were going to say. Is your brain made out of money? That's all you think about. I bet you see dollar signs everywhere. In addition to that, you don't seem to know anything about anything. I'm amazed by your total stupidity. What the hell are you talking about? What do you mean I know anything? Come on, explain yourself. Actually, we all only learned about this the other day in the hospital. We learned that you and my dad were never really married. So, about that inheritance that you were counting on, you get nothing, I'm afraid. Pardon me? Are you out of your mind? You've totally lost it, Irene. I'm not laughing for information. Not funny. Anyways, a bald faced lie won't pass muster with me. It's not a lie. I checked all the dad's documents after he passed. There's no evidence whatsoever that he even married you. No marriage certificate, no application to City Hall, nothing. That can't be right. Did you even check the proper papers? I distinctly remember signing the marriage application. He even gave me a wedding ring. I have it right here. Yeah, you signed it all right, but dad never submitted. Meaning it's just a useless piece of paper. I found the application with your name on it in dad's desk drawer. I had no idea about the ring. So legally speaking, you and my dad aren't married, just total strangers. You have zero right to inherit even one penny. Don't give me that crap. This is not possible. We're legally married. Check the other papers. Oh, I get it. You're making this all up so you guys can hoard the whole thing. That's what this is about, isn't it? Why would I go through all this trouble to contact someone elaborate lie? A little checking and the whole lie would be proven false. I don't know about that. You could falsely something. You could falsify something. Show me the proof then. I want to see the proof. You really don't believe me, do you? You want to see his personal legal files? Okay. It's an official notarized document. I think it'll be proof enough. Nothing in here about you. Here's a photo of it. What the hell is this? My name? Where's my name? He never legally registered me as his wife? How can that be? Here's your proof. Straight from dad's files. None of us knew anything about this. We all thought you guys were legally married. That's why we treated you with respect. We figured you were out legal stepmom, but you failed to return that respect. This is not happening. How could this be? Why didn't that idiot submit the marriage application? Did you just forget or what? Actually, we just read his will. It said he was well aware that you did not love him. Pardon me? He knew? He knew I didn't love him? All this time? He was only pretending? Yeah, looks that way. That's why he wasn't very concerned that you did not visit him in the hospital. Is that why he didn't submit the application? He knew I didn't love him and to go back at me? Didn't legally make me his wife? Was this some kind of sick revenge? Is this his idea of payback? No, I don't think it was out of vengeance. Dad was grateful for your companionship. Like you said, he was lonely after Mom died. He was thankful for the times he spent with you. Then why did he leave me high and dry? He could have at least left me something. If he was so grateful, this is what I get in return? I feel like I've been defrauded. Actually, Dad did it because he cared for you. For your future. I'm supposed to be grateful for this? This is more like a mean-spirited joke. Dad knew he didn't have long to live. That's why he didn't submit the application. He didn't want you to be a lonely widow. He probably believed you wouldn't be able to live alone without him. He did you a favor even after death. Don't start an another sob fest. 
If you feel so sorry for me, give me half of the inheritance. At least do that, and then I'll be out of your hair. My father gave you his credit card when he got married. Isn't that right? You made considerable use of that card. Considering how much you spent, I think it's more than enough compensation. But that was a pittance. I was supposed to get the whole inheritance. Th this is not right. That spending spree with his card and the inheritance? These are two completely different issues. But I'm sure if we check the card statements, it'll be obvious that you spent quite a bit. I don't see why you would ask for more. That's just being greedy, but greed is your forte. You never had a monocule of love for my father. Why should you even receive anything from him? But what was I supposed to? I mean, why did I even marry that old geezer? I waited patiently for him to pass so that I could enjoy the rest of my life. Well, it was only a year, but you had fun while it lasted, right? You were able to buy anything you wanted. You ate at the best restaurants. What more can you ask for? I suggest you live with that memory. The memory? Are you kidding me? I don't want memories. I want money. Memories are for chumps. Pay me if you want to get rid of me. I have that right, don't I? My father has passed away. That makes us complete strangers. No, wait. We've always been strangers, come to think of it. You were never our stepmom. But your dad loved me and cared about me, all right? Doesn't that count for anything? So, on behalf of your father's feelings, you should pay me. That makes no difference now that he's gone. To me, you're like some kind of pest. Well, the pest has been neutralized. That's an invaluable outcome of this whole story. After that conversation, I blocked her from my line app. I have to confess that I didn't want to hear her voice again. But she didn't give up that easily. It turns out because a few days later, she came barging into our home demanding that we share the inheritance. But with the help of my brothers and the threat of calling the police, we were finally able to chase her off. We warned her that we wouldn't hesitate to call the police if this persisted, and that little warning seems to have taken care of the problem. I later heard from a friend who knows her that she's in deep in debt. Apparently, after the high life she enjoyed with my father's money, never really subsided, and she continued to live that extravagant lifestyle which eventually left her unable to make ends meet. She tried selling off all the jewelry and brand goods she bought with dad's money, but it wasn't enough to cover her enormous debt. She married my dad for money, and after he passed, rather than turning her life around, her obsession with money continued undebated. Money seems to be her sole obsession. Maybe it was a fitting demise. Hey, Belle. You promised we'd go to the zoo tomorrow, right? You seem to be coming home late tonight, but... Are you going to be able to wake up tomorrow? What? Zoo? Oh, come to think of it, we did talk about something like that. What? Did you forget? Not exactly, but did I say I would go? I thought I said I would think about it. No, you said we would actually go this time. You forgot about our plans last month, so you said this time for sure. What? Are you sure about that? I thought I declined because I was busy. Sorry, but can I pass on tomorrow? Wait, but you promised. I'm really sorry, but I'm in the middle of having dinner with a client. The future of the company kind of depends on this. You understand, right? Okay, if it's work, it can be helped. Sorry. We'll go for sure next month, okay? Until then, I'll work hard and earn a lot of money. I'll buy you anything you want at the zoo. See? Aren't you excited? Yeah, that would be great if we ever go. I got this. I promise, next month. I'm sorry I have to work all the time, Jen. It's okay. I know you're working hard. Then I'll clean up around the house so you can relax at home tomorrow. Oh, um... I don't think I'll make it home tomorrow. I'm going to go back to the office, work through the night, and sleep there. The earliest I'll be home is tomorrow night. Really? Tomorrow's a Saturday, though. You must be really busy. I mean, it's a multi-million dollar project, so everyone's putting in a lot of effort. It wouldn't be fair if I went home first. 
That's true. I'm here to support you too. Sorry to interrupt you. Good luck. Thanks. Good night. Kylie, sorry, it's so late. Are you awake? Huh? Of course I am. It's a Friday night. I'm just about to go drink the night away. Oh, glad to see you're doing so well. Anyway, about your invitation. Oh, about tomorrow. I want to go do some shopping, but I can't find anyone to go with me. I want to go too. Let's go together. Wait, did your husband cancel on you last minute again? I mean, it's the night before, so it's not really last minute. That's called last minute. A girl has to start preparing the night before. But you were looking forward to going to the zoo. He told you he'll go for sure next time, didn't he? Well, yeah, but... But I kind of had a feeling that this would happen. Oh my gosh. I can't believe him. Will you give me your husband's number? I'll tell him off for you. That jerk. It's okay. He's really busy with work right now. He's having dinner with some clients right now. And he won't be home until tomorrow night. He must be so tired. Always sleeping over at the office. Wait. He's always sleeping over at the office? So he doesn't come home? Yeah. He only comes home for a change of clothes these days. Just a change of clothes? What about a shower? What? Does he shower when he comes home? No, he doesn't shower. He just gets a change of clothes and leaves. What about it? Then he takes a shower somewhere else. Okay, okay. Wait a second. But there's a gym and an internet cafe nearby. Yeah, that's true. I hope I'm just overthinking things. Then, will you give me a picture of your husband? What? Why? I can usually tell just by looking at their face. At least if they've done it or haven't done it. Done what? It's fine, just show me. So, what did you find out? Wait, are you sure this is the right picture? This man is really your husband. Yeah? Is everything okay? He's definitely done it. Wait. No, don't just judge him. I mean, he acts cold sometimes, but he's a really nice guy. Um, no, I mean, he's actively doing it. I was drinking at this bar with a friend earlier, and was picked up by two guys. And now it's the four of us drinking. What does that have to do with anything? One of them is this guy. What? Um, wasn't he having dinner with a client? I don't exactly remember becoming one of his clients. Are you kidding? Please tell me you're kidding. Then I'll send a picture as evidence. Bill, it can't be. I even took a picture with a clock in the background. Now, do you believe me? I'm really sorry. This must be really hard for you. But I can't just watch and not say anything. No, it's not true. I can't believe this. But there's two of them, right? Then the other person must be his client. Oh, that might be true. The other guy was the one who talked to us. There might be a tiny possibility that he's just being forced to tag along. What are you doing right now? I'm in the smoking room since Sue texted me. Wait, those two are gone. Where did they go? What? Sorry, Jen. It looks like those two left. They probably left because we weren't really into them. Hey, I really think you should be careful of that guy. Yeah, but I'm going to trust Bill for now. He was probably forced to tag along with his client. Well, whatever the case, we'll talk more tomorrow. 
What time do you want to start? How does the eleven sound? Wait, aren't you drinking until the morning? Shouldn't we start later? Don't underestimate my energy. See you tomorrow. Hey, Jen, I have a surprise for you today. What? A surprise? It's your birthday today, isn't it? Wait, you remembered. I thought you had forgotten. I would never forget your 30th birthday. For your big 30th, I made a reservation at a nice restaurant. Let's meet up in front of the station in two hours, okay? All of a sudden, I'm really happy. I'm always canceling our plans, so I wanted to make it up to you. I'll be waiting at the station. Okay, thanks. Bill, where are you? I'm at the station. Hey, are you serious? Damn, I might have gone a little too far with this joke. Huh? I'm actually looking at you from a distance right now. Aren't you overdoing it a little? Overdoing it? But you said it was to celebrate my birthday. Oh my gosh, you make me laugh. You're so overdressed. I'm embarrassed just watching you. Wait. Is that you over there? Did you come in sweatpants? But you said we were going to a fancy restaurant. Making a reservation at a fancy restaurant for your birthday was a joke. Don't be dressing up just to go to a regular restaurant. I want a divorce. What? So you really don't care about me. I can't believe you would do such a thing. I trusted you, and you disappointed me. Wait a second. Why are you taking this seriously? I've been so busy lately, and we haven't had a good laugh for a while. I just thought this would bring us closer together. Even so, this is way over the line. Do you know how much you've hurt me? This made me fall out of love with you. Goodbye. Hey, hold on. Are you for real? It's just a joke. Don't take it so seriously. Hey, wait. Where did you go? Did you go home? I'm leaving. Wait, I reserved a kid's lunch for you at the restaurant. You have a bad sense of humor. Do you think this is funny? It's okay to joke around once in a while. It's just the two of us. Hang on a second. What? Who is this? I'm Jen's friend, Kylie. The blondie you picked up at the bar last week. Uh, wait. Jen's friend? It was so careless of you to flirt with me without knowing. Uh, no. I don't remember doing that. That's fine. I already have proof of that. And this is another story anyway. Did you just tell Jen that it's just the two of you? Yeah, so what? There's a guy here with a camera taking pictures of Jen. What? Isn't he the guy you were with at the bar? Are you two trying to make Jen look like a fool by filming her? You guys are such jerks I can't even comprehend. Do you know how much Jen was looking forward to today? It has nothing to do with you. Stay out of it. The guy with the camera also has nothing to do with it. Damn it. You're such a jerk. You played with Jen because she's so naive. Also, didn't you pick up another woman at the bar and took a taxi with her last week? What? I didn't tell Jen, but I have it on camera. My best friend, Jen. I'll never forgive you. Hey, what is Tom doing now? Tom? Oh, this loser. I took away his camera, tied his hands, and made him get on his knees. I screamed pervert and made a scene. Hey! You're the worst! I don't want to be told by you. What about Jen? What is Jen doing? Or did Jen make you do this? Jen's with me, and no, she didn't make me do this. She texted me earlier, saying that you reserved a fancy restaurant. Since I don't trust you, I secretly came to the station first to watch. And I found this dummy with a camera. Damn it! Will you hand the phone back to Jen? I want to apologize. What? Now you want to apologize? Why don't come over here and get on your knees if you want to apologize? 
No, I can't do that, but... If you can't, don't say you want to apologize. I mean, even if you did apologize, you won't be forgiven. Are you serious about the divorce? Of course. You even had an affair, so I'm going to ask for the maximum amount of compensation. Also, I'll be telling your company about this. What? My company has nothing to do with this. I know. It's just a payback. This Tom guy recorded everything, so I'll be sending them that. It won't be a problem since it was taken by yourselves, right? Hey, hold on. I'll pay the compensation money. So please, don't get my company involved in this. Then admit it. You weren't actually busy with work. You were just playing around with women. Fine, I'll admit it. I'm sorry. I know it's wrong, but I can't stop. I've learned my lesson. I'm really sorry. Okay, I accept your apology. I've sent out an email with Tom's video to your company. What? What's the deal? What's going on? Why are you so upset? It's just a joke. After that, Kylie and I left Tom tied up at the station and left. I served Bill with divorce papers. We uncovered affair after affair, and his alimony was a lot. Also, his reputation in the office became bad because of the video that was sent. Because of all of the hate coming from the people at the office, he and Tom were left with no choice but to quit. Bill came crying back to me, but because I only ignored him, he gave up and left the city. There is a part of me that feels sorry for him. But Kylie told me he's such a loser, forget about him. And I was able to move on. Things wouldn't have gone so smoothly if it were just me. So I'm really grateful for Kylie. I'm living the single life now. It's so fun not having to worry about anything that I don't think I can get married again.